So today we're going to be foraging for clams and being from Boston we're going to try to make a true New England clam chowder along with a homemade bread bowl. So the three varieties of clams that we're going to be going for today are manila clam, little necks and cockles and to go clam digging it's really simple you just need to buy some cheap tools that you can get at Home Depot. So we're going to be using today a hand rake. It's just for helping to break up those rocks since you'll find the clams in a really rocky area. We're we'll using a trowel to help dig away the sand just so you're not pawing it away with your hands. And then the third tool we're going to use, so this is a simple crab gauge, but we're going to be using this part. This is the hole that's going to be measuring how big your clams are. The minimum size is 1.5 inches across. And to measure it, we're just going to try to put the clam through the hole and make sure that um, its end-to-end -end longest piece doesn't go through and you'll know it's good for the taking. When you're digging for clams, you don't want to dig too deep. All you really have to dig is about five to eight inches. Anything beyond that, um, you're probably not going to find too many. So if you're finding that you're at the five to eight inch mark, maybe just move along a little bit to the left to the right um, before you give up on that site altogether. So when you're digging for clams, make sure to kind of lightly spread the sand away. Um, you don't want to kind of jam into it because you have a pretty big risk of just breaking the clam shell and effectively killing the clam even if it's undersized. On a baby clam, it's mad tiny. So we're just going to move on from the spot because I'm seeing a lot of undersized clam shells so I think um, we're, I'm sure we're going to find a bunch of them but they're pretty much all going to be undersized. Before you move on, make sure to put back all the sand and rocks you uncovered into that spot that you dug up so that the clams have a tight, sandy environment to live and survive in. You would think this kind of rocky shore wouldn't have the clams. And you know, instead you try to target the, like you just saw there, the water spouting from the holes. But we've already had success here and if you find that you're not seeing any clams in this kind of rocky shore, it might not be that there is none, but maybe you just need a move. Like I mentioned before, clamming is really approachable. The tools are really cheap and affordable, and you can kind of find the spots just by driving past them. So it's something you can just pick up and just run with immediately. Can we haven't gotten one yet? No. Oh, shoot! This one's... Yo, do you think it's big enough? Do you think it's big enough? I think it's big enough. I'm not sure. Maybe try this side. This one doesn't go through anyway. All right, this is our first one right here. So I'm trying to comb this area and hopefully we can find a little more. Oh, second. Let's check it out. See that? Yeah. With clamming, it's kind of like a when it rains, it pours situation. Just because they're so tightly kept together. I'm happy we just got two so far because our first spot we were digging at, there was probably like five to ten, but they were so tiny that we just had to move on because it seemed like all of them were just small. Got another one, but it's way too tiny. So on the quest for clamming, I know it's gonna be really enticing to try to kind of turn over every rock, but you wanna to try to leave everything in its original place as much as you can. The rocks might look like they're just in the way, but they can actually be a really important part of the ecosystem for a lot of the animals here. If you try overturning one rock, you'll see like crabs scutter underneath. You'll see limpets attached to it, barnacles, sometimes snails. So you wanna really be careful of what you're touching and moving around since it is their environment, their world. Ooh, I think that's big enough. I'm gonna pass. Yeah. Wanna measure it? Okay, sure. Oh, yeah, you're nice. Right. Yeah. Holy really crap. Big. Like, look at this. It's like giant. These are the other clams we found, it just for like reference. Comparatively. So we just took up this one. I'm not sure what it is, but we think it's a little neck, but just to be safe, I'm just going to put it back. Let me know in the comments below if you know exactly for sure what this is. So I think we're all set for today, and we dug in this really small area. It's like three feet by maybe two, two and a half feet. 
and we found all these clams right here. Check it out. We're gonna have plenty for our chowder. And of course this gigantic one. So we're back in the kitchen and we're gonna be making some clam chowder. So just a side note for the purists from Gloucester, this won't be a true, true traditional clam chowder using ingredients like salt pork, but for this video, we're just gonna say it's the next best thing. Since we're using bacon, which has a strong taste, we're gonna have to make sure there's still a strong clam flavor at the forefront of this chowder. So I'm gonna be using both fresh clam broth that we're gonna make ourselves, and then we're gonna combine it with my favorite clam juice or clam broth, and this is from the Bar Harbor brand. So all the ingredients we're gonna be using to cook this chowder, I'm just gonna do rough chops of everything. So the first thing you see on the chopping block is the celery. The chop doesn't have to be too precise. In fact, a lot of purists just prefer celery completely withheld from their chowders. Next, we're gonna chop up some onions. Next, we're gonna do a rough chop of our red potatoes and we're gonna keep the skin on. So if you see any uh, yellow specks of sand looking material, that's actually cornmeal that we let the clams filter through for a few hours just to get all that grit and the dirt and sand out of their systems before we cook them. So to make the clam broth, we wanna fill the pot with some clams and enough water to cover them. And then you put an additional one inch of water above it. Bring it to a boil and cook covered for about four minutes or so. Then adjust heat to low and cook for an additional 10 minutes. Remove clams as they start to open. And when they're cool enough to handle, you can start removing the clams from their shell so you can get ready to put them into your chowder. So all the clams just opened and we transferred them to a separate bowl. And now what I'm gonna do is strain the clam broth to see if we don't have any extra like broken shells or anything like that into a separate pot. We have our clam broth, but we're gonna just set this aside and we're gonna render some bacon. I just threw in the onions and the celery and we have it cooking down in some of that rendered bacon fat. So we're just gonna cook it until it's a little bit tender. So the next step we're gonna do is throw in our red potatoes and we're gonna combine that with about two cups of our homemade clam broth and the bottle of clam juice. And it's just called clam juice, but it's the same thing as uh, clam broth. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and once it hits a boil, we're gonna lower the heat and cook uncovered until the potatoes are tender. And after that, the next step is adding one cup of our whole milk and then adding up the clams that we removed from the shells and we quickly just chop them up and we're gonna throw in half of the bacon pieces that we crumbled up. We're gonna stir it a little bit and we're gonna cook it for about three to five more minutes. Our final step is adding that flour slurry that we made in order to thicken up the chowder. While you're adding it, slowly incorporate it so you're not just throwing it all in there. And now I think we're ready to serve the clam chowder. So we're ready to scoop it and Jacqueline made actually a small bread bowl for us to enjoy it. And if you wanna see how to make a bread bowl, we actually did do it in a former video. So just check up that little link that'll pop up. But we do have a normal bowl as well because there's just too much chowder. Which one do you wanna try first, the bread bowl? I mean, same um, thing, but. You can just try this one first. See that? Yum. Some celery. Bacon. A little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. We usually like it a little bit thicker, but if you do want your chowder more thick, you just want to add um, more flour or was it cornstarch? Corn yeah. Maybe use heavy cream if you don't care. Also, mm -hmm. it's really good. I definitely taste all the flavors of everything that you put in. Mm -hmm. um, I think the consistency, yeah, it could be creamier, but it's still good. I love it. Mm -hmm. Bacon obviously adds a nice touch, and chopped up the clam just um, not too much. So there's a lot of great bites of clam with every kind of spoonful. It's not too much celery, right? No, it's okay. But yeah, I think if you put in more than one stock, it would have been too much. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna use the bread oh. cap. <laughs> the flavor is a little different just because we're using, I believe we're using different clams. Um, there are some manila and I think there was like one horse neck clam in there. Mm -hmm. um, from the East Coast, um, there's a different variety. So, the taste, I think, is a little bit varied. It's really good though, and I definitely think we should make this again. What do you think? 
I think I'm definitely gonna make it again. So if this chowder looked good to you and you wanna try out the recipe, we have um, ingredients and recipe down below in the description box. <laughs> if you wanna go clammy, make sure you have all the appropriate tools, just like how we showed earlier in the video, and make sure you have a fishing license, and remember the limit is 50 per day per person. If you wanna see us make anything else or have any other ideas for certain ingredients we've used in the past, just let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, bye! Please like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm very hungry. <laughs>